What is up YouTube? This is Black Guy Senpai here and I am doing a deck profile on my draw heavy uh, Thavas deck profile. Um, hopefully if we have enough time I'll be able to actually show you guys the uh, more aggro build which doesn't, it's like I think maybe two or three cards difference at the most um, and it changes the play style a lot. So uh, as far as starter we start our using Bubble Edge Draco Kid. He is uh, older starter which is still probably the most reliable one if you want to have consistency in your games uh, you use you use a skill uh, pre GB or hopefully if you're not playing against chaos or overlords you use it after you go ahead and do your first uh, Alexandros turn to get you the most amount of cards but he is put it into your soul and then choose a unit then at the fourth wave or more um, it doesn't say the first time or second time but fourth wave or more um, whenever that unit attacks, you draw a card, but you have to attack the vanguard. So, just in case a couple of people were wondering if they could just cheese it out by swinging at the rear guard. Um, next, we're going to go with our grade zeros. We are running for Kelpie Rider Petros. He is the Persona crit for Thavas. Um, so, basic when your vanguard attacks, it doesn't have to attack the vanguard, it can attack the rear guard. Um, you shove it into soul, give the vanguard plus 5k, you draw a card. Very, very basic. And then the rest of our crits, three supersonic sailors. Um, yeah, the unflip is important, but it's not as important once you see uh, like how how much counter... We don't really have too many more counter blast issues anymore, thanks to a couple of cards in the deck. But he's also an older card. He is... Uh, put him in the soul, so he gives you soul, and then you counter charge. So basically, if you call like Adelaide, uh, it basically makes Adelaide free and gives Adelaide plus 2k. But you know, that's part of the combos. Uh, next, for Battle Siren Malika, uh, she's Margul clone, put in the soul, give plus 3k. Um, pretty good. You need draws to live <laughs> to get to your combo pieces, and that's why we are running five draws. We are running a new guy. He's also a Margul clone, but he's Blue Wave specific. Uh, well, not specific, but he's Blue Wave. So if you play Blue Waves, keep an eye out for that deck profile later. Um, he gives them plus 3k. And for our final trigger, if you haven't guessed it, it's also a Blue Wave card. It's a Blue Wave Engineer Refit Sailor. Uh, this is a new wave of heal triggers, which I f personally find really awesome. Um, she is... You know, when she is used to pay the cost for a G-Guard, you take another card in the drop zone that has heal in its name, or it has heal, and then you bind her and you bind that card. Then you can either soul charge or counter charge one, which is, you know, why you don't really have to worry too much about uh, counter charges in this deck, which is why I don't run as many supersonic sailors. Well, one of the reasons. And you don't really find yourself too much going after the... Uh, the soul charge in Thavas, because not too many th units need soul blasts. There's only two units. Um, next, we're going up to grade ones. Four, Ocean Keeper Plato. Uh, protects the Vanguard, Vanguard only. He uh, counter charges if there's another copy in drop zone once you use him. Pretty good card. Um, we don't have a better perfect guard. I don't know why Bushy Road didn't give us a, a decent Ezra's or a... Uh, or that card from <laughs> just Gear Chronicle that just bounces back to the hand. So, whatever, we're out of course. We can make deal with it. Uh, four Kelpie Rider Nikki's Stride Enablers helps you get to the right Thalvis that you want to be on, or just Thalvis, period, if you don't play uh, a grade, up, grade three lineup of all Thalvises. Um, I am looking for SPs, so if you guys have them, come my way. Uh, we can work something out. Anyway. But yeah, he's a stride enabler. You want to be able to keep as many cards as you can in your hand. You don't want to have to too often ditch a grade 2 and a grade 1 because those would be the combo pieces that you need. So max out on this. I know a lot of other people are playing, uh, in my opinion, the greedy way. And they're like running like 3. Um, in my opinion, you could do that in blue waves because of uh, one of your grade 3s. But that's just because he comes back to your hand. Anyway, moving on. We have... Uh, Went down to three Malikas from our last build, and we went down to three Milan. Oh, not Malikas. I'm sorry, Melanias. 
Um, like she's still an amazing card. She's still a great uh, ride. Um, she has resist, which helps against Link Joker, uh, Narakami, Kagero. Helps out a lot. And but one of the other cards that I found that I actually help out a lot more, uh, which we'll be going into next, um, warranted her going down to three. Now, her skill is just a counter blast one wave third or more which is very important, um, wave 30 or more, counter blast one, she gets plus 5k and you draw a card. Um, so this is part one of like the draw heavy build. And um, it's like, it comes in way more clutch than normal, but I don't use her as often. Um, if that makes any type of sense, I hope it does. Um, and the card that we cut her down to four, four, or down to three, four, uh, battle siren or Thea. I, for the longest time, since, like, probably until, like, three weeks ago, did not like this card. I thought it was a waste of resources. I thought it was a waste of space. Um, but she just, she's really good. She has resist. She is counter blast one, soul blast one. Um, when she, when she boosts, she, uh, she goes ahead and she gives minus 5k to the thing that she boosted and it stands again. Which, if you use it in tandem with this, um, you know, it gets you, it could be that difference of getting you two cards or three cards to your hand because of that draw. So, hopefully when I do the combo video or uh, later, you guys will be able to, I'll be able to show you guys that. Next, we're going to start off with some, with a majorly uh, controversial change to a lot of people. They think that it probably would be bad, but it's actually really not. Uh, we're running three title assaults. Um, we're running three title assaults because um, there's a lot of re-standards in this deck now, and I feel like he's not needed as much. Three copies gives you pretty much almost the same consistency, probably like maybe a 4 or 5% difference in not seeing it if you have four. But still, title assault has been great since day one, since uh, BT13. He is uh, on attack if he attacks the Vanguard. He restands, loses 5k. So he's been the enabler of multiple attacks since, you know, since way back when. But he's still a great card. I just don't feel like he's needed at 4 anymore. Um, one of the other reasons is coming up why. I run two Adelaides. Adelaide, counter blast one, sold blast one. She gains plus 2k, and when she attacks a Vanguard, she can restand. Um, so that's five restanders in the deck so far. Technically, um, if you add her in, that's three. Um, like, we, like, like, the deck doesn't need that many restanders anymore. Um, because you're going to be drawing so many resources. Like, you're not going to even really notice that these two cards are at five total copies in the deck. Um, and now we're getting into some of the newer slash... Uh, different things about this deck that make it different from the aggro build. Um, for Shipra, she is a godsend. As long as you have a Thavis Vanguard on your turn and your opponent's turn, she has resist and she has plus 2k. So she's an 11k on your turn, your opponent's turn, no matter what, period. She's an amazing card. If you put her behind her or you put Orthea behind her, it's not a really great time for your opponent. Um, it's a 21k column if you use her ability, which is wave second to fourth. So second battle, third battle, or fourth battle. You counterblast one, she gains plus 4k, or plus 5k, I'm sorry, and you draw a card. So she's grade 2 Melania, and she can make better numbers, more viable numbers. Um, so like I said, behind it, any 7k behind her is a 21k column. Um, with Alexandros, it's just like not even nice. And a card that only got better with the release of this set of Ultimate Stride. We're going for Shipra. Um, I know a lot of you probably dismissed this card from a while ago. Because it's only an 8k and technically you don't even really plus. Because you have to drop her from hand and then you only draw an extra card. And then you lose board presence. So technically you just neg out. 
But with Alexandros, you get more mileage out of her, you drop more uh, cards out of your opponent's hand, or you give them a damage, which technically either A, depending on how many cards they drop, gives you a plus one to plus three, or if they don't take it, if they don't do anything, you plus one because they take a damage because that's a card out of their deck that they couldn't use because it's in the damage zone right now. Or that's a heal trigger that they used because, you know, they can't G-guard against you with it. So I don't care, let them heal out. And finally, we are at grade threes. And I'm going to start off with three OG Thavas. I still love this card in certain matchups. It's still good. And plus, you want it for the Thavas name because there are a ridiculous amount of, not a ridiculous amount of cards, but there are a decent amount of cards in here that need the Thavas name. Uh, so off the bat, top of that, just those two right now. Um, and then Petros. Um, so you still want to keep, you know, the Thavas name. You don't want to mess it up. I've tried, I've tried like the first couple weeks with uh, Benedict. Benedict is great, but he's a 10K. He makes awkward column numbers, and he doesn't just like get there. He doesn't like, especially with Alexandros. Alexandros, he'll get to like multiples of 10. He won't get to multiples of 11, which is something that you need in the deck to provide more pressure to drop that extra card out of your opponent's hand or just make them say forget it I'm just gonna take the damage and if you guys haven't guessed it yet what the uh, final grade 3 is oh actually wait let me go over OG Thavis' skill for those of you who are new um, his stride when your genius strides over this it gives your units not just the vanguard your units so I can attack with a rear guard as long as you meet the requirement of getting fourth wave, which is a fourth attack. Um, you can use the skill of select up to three of your opponent's rear guards. Um, it's probably not worded that way, but it's an auto skill, and auto skills are do as much as you can, so you can't miss this. Um, so if you have one rear guard, if your opponent has one rear guard, you can still use the skill. They have two rear guards, you can still use the skill. Three rear guards, guess what? Still use the skill. Um, you can go ahead, choose three of your opponent's rear guards. Your opponent then chooses one. It has to be a legal target. So if they pick something with resist, they can't choose that. They're just trying to cheat you. Um, so they choose it and then it retires. It's not as handy as it once was, like way, way back when the trial deck first came out for Aqua Force. Um, but it is still nonetheless a great card. And then the GB2 skill that nobody ever uses. Um, when this unit attacks the vanguard and is a wave fourth or more, he just becomes a grade three silent tom with a crit, pretty much. That's all he does. And now let's get to the man of the hour, the one who is, as some would say, a champion. <clears throat> Supreme ruler of the storm, Thavis. This guy, oh man. Um, it's something as simple as giving all of your, well, not all of your units resist, but giving your units resist when you stride. So basically, you stride, you pick a card from your hand, you call it. So let's just say I strode Alexandros, this was in hand, I called it, but um, this card was already on board. I can go ahead and give this card resist, and then if it had wave, it can attack from the back row. So if it was Shipra, and I called this in front of it, Shipra can attack from the back row. She already has resist, so that part doesn't really matter. But, you know, you don't have to give resist in the uh, if it has wave skill to the unit that you called because it's worded like alt mile. So that's just a little early pro tip for you guys. Um, he also has a, a rear guard skill, which is amazing. It is wave first is gb2 first off so you have to fulfill all the gb requirements and then you have to do it on the wave requirement um which is wave first or the fourth wave so wave two and three his skill does not proc um make sure that you understand that and you know that um because it is very important it's if you guys have been watching hopefully uh my <laughs> youtube videos um You'll you'll know that uh, I've been uh, I've been sometimes you'll see me like attack 
with a rear guard then attack with Alexandros just to give him power. But, you know, you have to make sure that you fulfill. He only gets the restand thing on the first or the fourth wave. So long as you attack second or third with him, you're good. Um, then he gets to restand. Then it's, that is so great. So that makes one, two, uh, three, four restanders in the deck right now. And that's not including my G-Zone so far. And pump that up with Bubble Edge. And just, you can just imagine the amount of draws that you can get. Like the most amount of draws I think I've gotten in one turn is like a nine. And that's not hitting any draw triggers or anything like that. Um, so next we're going to go into the G zone, which is my favorite part. Um, we are running three of the newest boy, that boy, uh, Alexandros. Alexandros is amazing. He is wave second or third time only. He is, uh, at the end of the battle, counter blast one. Uh, you choose a face down card from your G zone, turn it face up. And then at the end of the battle that this unit attacked, you may pay the cost. If you do choose two of your rear guards, stand them. It doesn't have to be rear guards that are rested. Just stand them because also, again, this is an auto skill. You can attack with one, then attack with Alexandros, choose the other one or choose the booster, whatever. And then stand them, and then they get plus 5k for each um, for each card face up in your G zone until the end of the turn. Jesus, this card is amazing. Um, this card is basically like Lambros on crack. I love this card. I've literally, you don't need any more than three. If you need any more than three, then you're doing something wrong. Um, a lot of the, a lot of Thalvis players nowadays or Blue Wave, or Maelstrom, or Ripples uh, players nowadays, they just go stride into this. And like, while it is great, and you know, it's it's arguable that you don't really need too much else, you still need to, <laughs> you still need 13 more cards for your G zone. So we're gonna go explore that. Uh, next we have two OG uh, Alexandros, AKA Lambros, the original busted card in Aqua Force. He's still amazing. He's basically just, you have to reach fourth wave and you still, you persona flip and then he's free. So if you run into a situation for some reason, uh, you've expended all your counter blast or your opponent is just playing smartly against you and they're not giving you counter blast and you want to be able to do all of your plays, it's going to Lambros. Lambros is still an amazing option. Um, so people, please don't believe that he's bad at all. Next, two Commander Thavis for the control matchup. He is Counter Blast 1, Persona Flip, give something plus 5k, and then it can attack from the back row. So, you can understand why it's still pretty good. And for one ofs, we have one Wailing Thavis. Wailing Thavis is still great. We have one Seabreeze for when they want to grade lock you. And, you know, they think, haha, Aqua Force can't do anything. I'm just going to make them use their counter blast up. Wrong. Uh, and then for strides, one Megiddo. Megiddo, I've used this card legitimately uh, probably twice. That's including playing on CFA and playing in real life. I've never had to use it, but I'd rather have it than, than not have it. Because what if I get into a situation where I'm in top decking mode. It's a deck that's burned down all my cards out of my hand. And the only thing I can do is I chop deck and then I get the, uh, get the pay cost for ultimate stride. I don't want to stride into like Alexandros. He's useless or whaling because super useless or Seabreeze. I don't want to be stuck into the going into those. I'll go into, uh, to Megiddo and get me a board again. All right. Now for G guards, we are going in to go into the obvies. Um, this is. Ice Barrier Dragon, he is a free plus 10k shield on wave 1st or 4th. Um, pretty much all there is about that. This needs to be a second one of these, um, hopefully SP. Again, I'm looking for SPs, people. Um, but it's dismal. It helps against D-Police because we're going to see a rise in that coming up because of the Stargate booster. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a necessary evil 
or if for some reason you want to protect your stuff against Kagero, because Kagero. Um, next, Rectum, because we want to, this is a draw heavy build. We want to go through our deck, we want to get to our pieces so we can start obliterating our opponents. Um, next, two, Galphelia. She is easily the best printed G guard that Aquaforce has, period. Um, she flips herself face down, um, and then you can either undelete, unlock, or counter charge. All the further costs of flipping her face down and soul blasting. And then wave two to three, she gets plus 5k shield. Like, that's amazing. Um, oftentimes, like, with this next card, which is Iohannis, I'll either flip her or I'll flip her with uh, Alexandros because why not? And then just use Alec. Um, and then just next turn, I'll have like a crap ton of power. Um, like, Iohannis, though, she is a. Uh, Counterblast 1, you have to be at GB1 to use it. So Counterblast 1, ooh, excuse me, trying to get over a cold. So Counterblast 1, flip something up, which normally is this. If it's anything else, you're doing it wrong. Um, then for every rear guard that you have, she gets plus 5k. The rear guards that you have all get resist and cannot be hit, which is a big F you to depolice, um, especially the Die Kaiser build. Because I hate Die Kaiser. Thanks, John Thingol. Um... But yeah, that's the deck profile. So now we are going to go try to set up a board for combos. All right, so we're going to go into basic combos of what um, what you can do on your first stride turn. First stride turn, usually I find myself with around like two to three damage. I've just or two, three to four damage. So I put four just to be safe. Um, and usually, unless I get good rushing turns, I don't put out any more rear guards other than this. And this is of course during a non-control matchup. Um, I'll show you what your best stride should be, or your the most optimal stride should be for your first stride turn, if you are going to get up against, like, Kagero or Link Joker. Uh, more specifically, uh, Star Vaders. So, my hand uh, consists of one Kelpie Rider Nikki, uh, one Saberflow Sailor, a re uh, Siren, Battle Siren Adelaide. This is an optional card. This is a, if you have it, it's great to have it. Um... This is also, if you have it, it's a great to have it card. And this one is needed, but it's also a great to, but you don't really need it. So first I'm going to go off with these cards, then I'll add, I'll go over the same combo again with these cards. Um, so you go ahead and you pay the cost for stride. So discard one, and then if it's just a regular matchup, stride into Alexandros. Um, Supreme Ruler Thavis is skill procs. So you can now call uh, a unit from your hand, which is one of these two, call it, give it resist. Um, questions you have to ask yourself is, what type of matchup is this? And uh, what, like, do they have defensive units that can, like, kill you? Like, obviously we said we're going to do this as if it's not a Kagero or Overlord matchup. So we're just going to go ahead and just to be on the safe side, we'll call this. It has resist. Um, and then next... You call down her, use her skill, counter blast one, soul blast one. Make sure if you have a Play-Doh in soul, you soul blast that thing out so you can max out the value of having to ride it. So now she has plus 2k and she can restand when she attacks the Vanguard. Um, why that's important is because um, with Alexandros, it restands her again. So you want to get her at uh, more powerful attacks. And again, this is your first try turn, so your G-Zone's here, face down. Um, so what you want to do, swing at a rear guard, or actually, you want to activate Bubble Edge skill. So you can target her, so she can get the, uh, two more attacks. Or two extra draws out of this turn. Um, you'll go swing at a rear guard for 11. And then, if you want to, just so you can have the extra wave, Swing for eight, it's gonna whiff, and that's okay. Um, you're going to swing at Vanguard, and then you'll triple drive three cards, boom, 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 they're in your hand now. Um, at the end of it, triggers or not, counter blast one, flip. What I like to flip over on my first stride turn is a C Breeze, because if you're both at great, if you're at the point where you need to stride now, or we can stride, he's pretty much useless and gives him some purpose. He stands these two ladies back up, 
both of their skills are ready to rock and roll because this will be the fourth wave that you're going to attack and uh they're both plus 5k so she's a 16k she's 13k um i would personally swing with this first so you can go ahead do that she has resist if for some reason they had the non griffin or something they can't choose her so you go ahead do that draw two more cards so that's five cards you've drawn this turn for giving up stride cost for stride then two more cards to put down on the board um you're technically minus one because you had to give up bubble edge for field presence um so she'll draw you two cards you're one card short swing with this draw one more you're even stands back up swings again you're plus one um if plus and minusing you know if that's not how it works then i'm sorry please don't crucify me <clears throat> man still getting over this but that is a stride turn where it's intimidating to your opponent because if you put down everything and then you go one two three four five six seven cards in your hand um without hitting any draw triggers like and you gave two of your units on board plus fives just for two counter blasts and a soul blast that's pretty good so next we're gonna go over this and we're gonna go over it with uh same three original cards but we're gonna go over it with these extra three cards so you can see how nice that could be we're gonna keep the same damage and everything and all right so your first stride turn and this is even good to do against with link jokers um if you're if you're going first and they haven't locked anything down for some reason um you pay the cost for stride again as normal and then you go ahead and call this as normal give it resist uh call down her you counter blast one soul blast one again blasting out the play-doh because he's the only thing beneficial in your drop zone to you um so she gets plus 2k now you call this put it in the soul give this plus 3k so now this can swing at vanguard and it can hit and it's pressuring out more pressure which helps you out a little bit better. Um, you're going to call this Battle Siren Orthea because she's gonna, later on going to help you. And now you want to refund the cost of either Battle Siren Orthea or Battle Siren Adelaide. You shove it into Soul, which is kind of Soul Charging, which is making up for this. And you Counter Charge, which made her free, pretty much. And provided extra Soul for this. Next, uh, this is optional, but if you know, I'd rather you do this, you go into Bubble Edge give it to her so swing 11 at vanguard they drop a card uh swing 11 at a rear guard um they either drop a card or let the rear guard go oh i'm sorry i didn't even stride paid the cost for stride but didn't do it um and then you swing um you go ahead get triggers don't get triggers um get your three cards right now you have three cards in your hand uh so you counter blast one flip something again uh, if you're at the point where you can stride, you don't need Sea Breeze anymore, stand these two, they both get plus five. This is wave four. Um, you swing with this, uh, her skill procs, because this is fourth wave or more, draw two. That's five cards that you got now. Then, her skill at, uh, procs, you draw a card from Bubble Edge, she gets to restand, so that's 16. Then you swing boosted for 23. And then you draw another card, counter blast one, soul blast one. At this point, it doesn't matter what you soul blast. And then you stand her and she loses 5k. So she's not 16 anymore, but she's 11 and she still gets the, uh, the card to draw off of the bubble edge Draco kid, which means you drew two from Saber Flow, three from this, three from the stride. So that's eight cards that you got to draw on your, on your turn. For technically three counter blast, two soul blast, and a, yeah, and two soul blast, and then a persona flip or a flip of a card in your G zone. That's uh, the stride combo that I like to do first, so that way I can try to pull ahead of my opponent. If you hit draw triggers, it's great. If you don't, it's still fine. You got eight cards if you have this setup. If you don't have this setup, you drew seven cards, which is still amazing because um, they could draw you things like heal triggers, perfect guards, whatever you might need to prepare for their next turn or to prepare you to, to just beat them down. I'll show you what it looks like for 
a control turn um, what you want your board to look like. Not the most optimal, but what you want the board to look like. You want to be on him. You want to stride on Alexandros. And then you can have... Um, actually, yeah, this will still work. So you call this from hand, give it resist. And you need this on board or you need that in hand to call it. Um, so that way you have your resist. Um, and if anybody's still playing Freeze Ray Dragon or something like that, um, if you want to play units in the back row, make sure you play stuff like this. It has resist, so they can't, like, do weird Destiny Dealer combos and make you, lo or Karnia or whatever, Karina, make you lock your stuff. Like, you won't have to lock anything. You'll still have all your units. Um, like, you have to make sure you pay attention to things like that. Uh, when you're playing against Aquafor, when you're playing against Control, because you have to keep your units on board. Right now, in Link, in Chaos, not Chaos Breaker, I'm sorry, in Overlords, only the Destiny can get around Resist, because he targets Circles. And Chaos Breaker, you need a large hand or to be stacky as hell in order to beat them, because they're going to rip cards out of your hand, so you need to, uh, you need to prepare, prepare your hand, which is why I like playing this deep draw build. Um, and if for some reason you feel like Alexandros isn't the best, or they have most of your field locked down, that's when you go into him. Um, if your opponent's at 5, don't go into another Alexandros. Go into something that's actually going to kill them. Um, Wailing Thavis, he's still amazing. He gets plus... Uh, plus five for each time your rear guard attacks. So like even with this board, it'd still be pretty dangerous. It'd be like a uh, swing eleven, swing fifteen, counter blast one, soul blast one, stand. Uh, that's two attacks right there. Swing counter blast one, kill two of their rear guards. He's plus ten. He's thirty six. So if you're playing against shadows, that's like they have to drop at least one G guard. So one plot maker. They have to drop that, and then they have to drop. At least another, uh, at least another 5k shield or a 10k shield for two to pass, and you still have this standing. So if you don't feel like you're gonna, be, like you drive check a crit on your first one, just give it to her. Give more pressure because most likely they at least drop three cards out of their hand to try to no pass you or two to pass you. Um, and then you'll drop more cards out of their hand with this. Um, and they have they lost two rear guards. And knowing ritual, they're probably not playing that many. If it's stuff that you guys want to see, just you know, tell me. I'll try my best to get it put out. If you guys want to see more deck profiles like this, or you want to see more real fights, you want to see more CFA stuff, uh, just let me know. Um, also, again, if you guys see any SPs, um, let me know. Just hit me up in my, uh, hit me up on Facebook, because you guys should know who I am by now. Hopefully. Um, and, uh, that's it, I guess. Black Guy Senpai, and I am out.